Welcome to another international relations capsule for the Shankar IAS Academy. Today, our topic is India-Pakistan back-channel diplomacy. There have been some signs in the last few weeks, in fact, months, that some kind of discussions were taking place between India and Pakistan or with the objective of resolving the present impasse. The first sign came when uh, Mr. Moeed Yusuf, the special assistant to the Prime Minister of Pakistan on national security and policy planning, said in October 2020 that Pakistan had received a message from India that India had desired to have a dialogue with Pakistan. He did not say where the message came from. He did not say what the response was, but a simple statement that India had sent a message. No level was indicated. Then, though unconnected, when the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, visited Sri Lanka, he sought permission for him to fly over India. After several occasions when Prime Minister of India was not allowed to fly over Pakistan. But India very quickly gave permission and this looked like an unreciprocated goodwill. Then we heard a little more formal news that the Director Generals of Military Operations of India and Pakistan had issued a formal statement saying that India and Pakistan will now observe the ceasefire established in 2003. Of course, 2003 was a long time ago. And uh, all these years, there have been very many violations of the ceasefire. And in fact, we came to the point of, of conflict on different occasions. But out of the blue, the Directors General of Military Operations announced that from now on, the ceasefire will be observed strictly. It was meant to be a decision of the local commanders, but the way it was worded, dealing about fundamental issues between India and Pakistan, gave the hint that this was, we said, something more than meets the eye. But still, many people believed that this was a, a routine announcement and there was nothing more to it. Then, but unexpectedly, the Pakistan Army Chief, General Kamar Bajwa, made a statement regarding India-Pakistan relations as the head of the Pakistan Army. He suggested that the long-standing issue of Jammu and Kashmir should be resolved in a dignified and peaceful manner in accordance with the wishes of the people of Jammu and Kashmir. This is nothing unusual, even though he did not mention the UN resolutions. He did mention the wishes of the people of Kashmir as a factor in resolving the Kashmir issue. But the fact that it came from the chief of the army appeared significant. He also said that Pakistan would not interfere in the internal affairs of states and urged India to forget the past and create a conducive atmosphere for peace. So he still put the onus on India to create that conducive relation, continuous, conducive situation, atmosphere for peace. But at the same time, he suggested that the past differences should be resolved in some way. He even mentioned that um, there are enormous benefits for India and Pakistan 
you cooperate and uh, this will bring about a lot of benefits to both india and pakistan in terms of the general economic situation the pandemic situation and other things this made everybody stand up sit up and say that something fundamental is happening some kind of dialogue is taking place and this dialogue is leading to some of these straws in the wind then the indus water treaty talks which were postponed again and again in the last few years was held then sports visas were given uh, to pakistan pakistani athletes and also indian athletes and also a lack of any strong words used by the prime minister or the opposition during the election campaign you remember that the last general elections the india pakistan issue became at most in the minds of the people and many people believe that the success of prime minister modi in the general elections depended much on the way he handled the situation on the border pulwama and balakot and so on but surprisingly though it was a very heated campaign that was happening in several parts of india tamil nadu kerala west bengal no mention was made of foreign policy and certainly nothing about india pakistan this may be because the internal issues were so important but this also seemed a little bit strange in the present situation and we must also remember that this was the time when the when india and china were engaged in very difficult negotiations for the disengagement of the troops in ladakh because as you know we have completed the first part and the second part is actively being considered so considering all this many commentators felt that something new is happening something is brewing and some good may come out of this but there are others who said that there was nothing much in this these are just housekeeping or accidental or incidental developments and this is because neither pakistan nor india confirmed any consultations leading to these developments and therefore whispers began that some back channel diplomacy was taking place somewhere to normalize relations we should remember here that this is not the first time we hear about back channel diplomacy between india and pakistan many occasions in the past when official discussions were not possible and dialogue was not possible both india and pakistan had used individuals experts to hold consultations behind the curtain and try to see whether there were some solutions which we could be produced out of the box because once the talks begin officially between the two delegations there is a tendency to go back to the old positions or at least we have to start with that on the pakistani side of course it is the core issue is kashmir they are only supporting the freedom struggle in jammu and kashmir and everything depends on the future of jammu and kashmir and till then peace is not possible and the indian side would have to start by saying that jammu and kashmir is an integral part of india and there is no question of any concession on that and so and also the indian position which has been reiterated after the new after the second term of prime minister modi that peace and war cannot take place at the same time 
In other words, we consider terrorist activities as war. And how can there be peace talks or dialogue when this is going on? So Mr. Modi said very clearly, even though this was a policy, even Dr. Manmohan Singh's time. But whenever an opportunity arose, India was willing to go more than halfway to start a dialogue. And also, uh, many, many uh, situations arose when the private people were used, quite a few former diplomats, some politicians, etc. So the advantage of doing this is that they don't have to repeat the official position. Both sides know what the situation is, and the effort is to break out of it and see whether we can find solutions to these without involving the governments themselves. This is often referred to as track to diplomacy. So with all these little events, it uh, became almost clear that there was there were consultations taking place at some level, at some place. But now, the foreign minister of, of Russia, Mr. Sergei Lavrov, was in India. And he met our foreign minister and others. And he went to Islamabad. In fact, he spent a longer time in Islamabad than in India. And at a press conference, he almost let the cat out of the diplomatic bag, as it were. When he said that uh, Russia appreciated much the recent efforts of India and Pakistan to normalize relations. So this is a very concrete indication that this is taking place. But even then, India has not confirmed it. When Indian spokesmen were asked whether there were any such uh, communications or dialogue, he simply said that we have missions on, in both countries. There is an Indian High Commission in uh, Islamabad, and there is a Pakistani High Commission in New Delhi, and the communications channels are open, and there is no reason why any other method should be used to deal with it. And this India has remained steadfast in this public position. But after Mr. Lavrov's statement, nobody believes that this is true. The reason for it is, naturally, is India's reluctance to accept that there is a dialogue unless we have concrete evidence that Pakistan is willing to cut down and eliminate terrorism. Then came more reports. It was suggested that these back channel negotiations are being held on the Indian side by our national security advisor, Ajit Dawal, and the Pakistan Army Chief, General Bajwa. And the reports were that they have been meeting off and on in third countries, maybe in neighboring countries, and the United Arab Emirates was mentioned as one of the countries involved. And there again, no confirmation. In fact, basically, denial from the two countries. The former ambassador of India, Mr. Satinder Lamba, who was engaged in uh, black back-channel diplomacy during the time of Dr. Manmohan Singh, not only suggested, he, in an interview, he not only suggested that back-channel diplomacy was desirable, but also said that Mr. Dawal and General Bajwa would be right people to engage in. It would be ideal. Reports were also heard that the high commissioners who were withdrawn some time ago because of the crisis would be back in their places. But a new exchange of high commissioners would take place and therefore the level of representation in each country will be enhanced. There were other indications also. One day suddenly out of the blue, Pakistan proposed 
resumption of trade relations with India in certain goods. India made no comment on it. And within 24 hours, Pakistan reversed that decision, saying that this proposal was put to the cabinet, but the cabinet was not agreeable to that. This was like a flash in the pan, just an issue that is by these things, and then they say the next day that is not by these things. And India took it very calmly. We did not criticize them for your, for proposing it or changing the position later. Another interesting thing that happened was in a second SARC-based meeting on the pandemic, there was one earlier in March last year, which was a failure because Pakistan did not participate at the head of government level. And um, the minister who came uh, to that meeting, as usual, raised the Kashmir issue. In the second, but in the second meeting of SARC, which was specifically on measures to be undertaken in view of the variants of the coronavirus, as well as a second or a third wave, which was expected, which were expected in uh, the subcontinent, strong action should be taken. And here, for the first time, probably in a SARC meeting, the Pakistani representative did not erase the Kashmir issue. And moreover, proposed prime minister's suggestion, he had made some five suggestions for collaboration among SAR countries to combat COVID-19. Another good sign. But none of these developments were acknowledged as significant by the Ministry of External Affairs, which maintained, as I said earlier, that the best avenue for communication between the two countries is the channel between the high commissions and no other channel was necessary. But most people did not believe this and the Indian position that no back channel communication had taken place sounded unreal. But it was true since there were no regular uh, consultation. Uh, it was uh, believed that it is not yet formal. And as I said, till Mr. the Foreign Minister of Russia made a formal announcement, because he didn't talk about back channel communications, but he said efforts of India and Pakistan to normalize relations. Of course, the first suspicion that most people had was that President Biden must be behind this because you have to find a point of a trigger. And uh, President Biden had made his policy position on the Indo-Pacific, Afghanistan, India, etc., made very clear. And it was possible that in the context of Afghanistan, where the United States is particularly interested in Pakistan, who is a key to the solution, of the Afghan situation, may have perhaps advised both India and Pakistan to make some peace moves. So this again is pure speculation. And of course, some welcome was expressed in different quarters that you know something seems to be happening between India and Pakistan. So nobody now believes that there is no action between India and Pakistan, and that all these small signs which we are seeing, the blossoms which we see on the India-Pakistan border are somehow real. And we can expect something more to come in the, in the future. But some interesting feature of the present situation is that the conversation is supposed to be not by non-official, uncommitted, individuals, but by Mr. Dohal and Mr. Bajwa, General Bajwa, who can hardly be considered back-channel diplomacy. Because back-channel diplomacy, the advantage is they don't have fixed positions. But even if it is a secret conversation between two representatives of the government who are in very high positions, with access to the heads of government, then it can hardly be called 
back channel diplomacy. It is more than that if they are actually involved. So there is no such indication of that. So the whole point of back channel diplomacy is to try out ideas without any commitment by the government of the of the two countries. And um, if the uh, discussions, consultations lead to something concrete, which could be acceptable to either side, then it could be turned, taken over by the government as it has happened in the past. So the secrecy of the back channel discussions can, can permit a few individuals whose activities will not be public without scrutiny by the press and the strategy community with unaccountable aims, because whether they succeed or fail, no credit or no blame is placed on them. In other words, they are often unsung heroes, because they can be very easily uh, disowned by the government concerned. So therefore, the interlocutors, unless they come to an understanding, the official negotiations cannot take place. There is no reason why the two sides should pretend that such things have not happened or will not happen. Because back channel diplomacy, which is often referred to as track two diplomacy, um, has taken place many times before. Mr. Satyendra Lamba himself was doing this for a long time. There was Mr. R.K. Mishra. There were several Indian public people who were engaged in this. Many of them, we don't even know what conclusions they reached because they are not in the public domain. But they write books about that. Those who are engaged in black back channel diplomacy sometimes writes books explaining what happened. Mm -hmm. So these th things do come out. So I could even say that, you know, back channel diplomacy or track to diplomacy is some kind of a cottage industry in uh, Islamabad and in Delhi. So since we have this long history of back channel contacts, even during wars, terrorist attacks, military action, whose work came to be known only later. Much has been accomplished by them, but the details are normally not released. The thing to remember is that in spite of all the difficulties that we have, any progress made in terms of India-Pakistan relations would be very welcome at this time because there has always been a fear after the Chinese action in Ladakh, that there could be a two fronts war facing India. So since we are engaged so much on the China border, it would give India much relief that the guns have fallen silent on the LOC. So while we are dealing with LAC, we want to make sure that the LOC is quiet. That is one reason. The other reason is that any prime minister, India or Pakistan, who can find a solution to this problem is sure to win a Nobel Prize. And which prime minister would not like a Nobel Prize? And the more courageous the prime minister is, the more imaginative the prime minister is, the desire to settle this and get an ultimate trophy is something which is in the minds of prime ministers of both sides. We have seen this before. So when India or Pakistan says that we will go the extra mile, there is this consideration that it is not a victory in a war which would be appreciated or admired by the world around us, particularly because we are both nuclear weapon states. Any kind of peace moves or normalization of relations will help 
and new elements have been introduced into the situation because Article 370 and the open claim that we have made on the Pakistani occupied Kashmir are some new elements in the whole situation because these two were not there in the original situation because India was quite willing to accept the LOC as the international border. And it was Pakistan who insisted that it should be LOC plus. But into that mix of issues and uh, intentions of both sides, some new elements have been introduced. So that opens up a little bit of new space because they could speak about Article 370 and if Pakistan accepts that, it will be some progress. Similarly, if you could speak about Pakistan occupied Kashmir and what our real intentions are, and that might clarify things. So, unlike in the past, there are opportunities, there are possibilities for some new issues to be talked and resolved. So, on the one hand, there is a desire for peace, particularly in the context of international public opinion. The China situation, uh, which could move to a two-front wars that India had to fight. And these new elements which have been introduced to the mix make it believable that, in fact, some discussions are taking place. India's difficulty is that we are bound by our position that no bilateral discussions will be possible unless Pakistan stops terrorism. Some Pakistan spokesmen said, well, if you are willing to talk about Kashmir, we are willing to talk about terrorism. But that is just a, a statement. But if there is sincere effort to resolve that and some basic understanding is reached between the interlocutors in the back channels, perhaps there is some hope that uh, there could be peace between India and Pakistan. So though the two countries have not confirmed that discussions are taking place, in the light of all these signals that I pointed out earlier, and particularly Mr. Lavrov's announcement in Islamabad, that uh, welcome changes are taking place in India-Pakistan relations. I think we can safely presume that some back-channel consultations are taking place. And let us hope that it will come to some kind of understanding and uh, we will have a, have a new uh, situation, a better situation between India and Pakistan. There is no guarantee that any of these things will happen at the, at the moment because there are so many hazards and dangers when India and Pakistan sit down to talk, whether secretly or publicly. So let's hope that something comes out of it. But at, the point, at this point, we are unsure of what exactly is happening. Thank you very much.